Hi GCO, so here is our new end of the day story. At the end of last term, we read another one of the Volga the Viking stories. And this time we've got Viga the Volking and the Great Gulp Games. So before I start reading it to you, I would like you to think about those key questions that we start off our um, new books with. So what can we see on the front cover? Pause now if you need to have a little think about what you can see. Okay, now you've thought about what you can see. What can you infer from the front cover? Have a little think, pause the video if you need to. Right, what questions have you got about the front cover? Have a little think. And finally, what do you predict is going to happen in this book? Jot it down if you'd like to, and then I will start reading. Okay, Volga the Viking and the Great Gulp Games. Chapter 1. In the market for a fight. Vegetables. Volga hated vegetables. We all Vikings shouldn't eat vegetables, he thought. We all Vikings should eat... Well, he wasn't actually sure what real Vikings should eat, but it wasn't vegetables. Bears, maybe, or dragons. But not cabbage, never cabbage. Four cabbages, his mum, Helga, said to the man at the vegetable stall. It was a market day in Blubber, the Viking village Volga called home. The main square was crammed with well-behaved shoppers buying things from stalls. But Volga longed for the bad old days, when proper Vikings looted and pillaged for their dinners. Buy five, get the six free, darling, said the veggie man. Special offer, you, just for you. What would you been so pretty in that? Volga, Volga almost laughed at that. Pretty? His mum was taller and broader than most of the men in the village. She had arms that could lift a horse and a face that could make it run away. Volga had never heard anyone call her pretty before, not even his dad. Four cabbages, Helga said, glaring at the man, and cut your nonsense. The man gulped, nodded, then dropped four cabbages into Helga's bag. Without a word, Helga handed over the few coins then she caught Volga by the arm and dragged him towards the next stall. Rags, she shouted to another trader. Get your rags here. Any colour you want, as long as it's grey. Fish heads, cried yet another. Lovely fish heads. Free bag of trout eyes with every purchase. Ooh. Helga made for that stall. Volga's mum couldn't resist the bargain and his dad was very fond of trout eyes. This is boring, Volga groaned. Why are we shopping? Real Vikings don't shop, they pillage and plunder. If it was up to me, I'd grab everything and escape in a longboat. A bag of trout eyes was thrust in front of Volga's face. He pulled, pulled back in disgust. Well, maybe not everything. Helga sighed. Hell's teeth, I've had enough of your moaning. She took the bag of trout eyes, opened it and tossed one into her mouth. Mm. It made a squelchy pop as she bit it, bit down on it. Go and take these to your father. Yes, Volga cheered. Where is he? Cleaning the toilets. Volga stopped cheering. Oh, do I have to? Yes, snapped Helga. Off you go and don't stop until you get there. Grumbling, Volga turned and plodded off in the direction of the, pub the blubber public toilets. Around him, the sound of the market continued. Pig's tails, get your curly pig's tails here. Earwax, nice and gooey, use it on your floor and use it in your beard. Broadsword, swords, helmets, get them while they're hot. Volga stopped. The blacksmith's stool stood directly in front of him. Swords and spears and axes were propped up along the front of the stool. Helmets and shields hung from hook, hooks on each side. Volga stared at the display, his mouth open and his eyes wide. Suddenly, shopping didn't seem so boring after all. The blacksmith was talking to another customer, so he didn't notice Volga running his fingers across the handle of the swords. Volga gripped one with both hands and tried to lift it, but it was heavier than he expected. He staggered backwards, his knees almost buckling, his face turning redder by the second. Eventually, he gave up. Straining, he dragged the sword back over to the stool. Volga peered at his reflection in a shiny shield. Could it be? Oh yes, at last. Was his beard finally beginning to grow? No, it was just a smudge of dirt on his cheek. Volga pulled a silly face and adjusted the helmet that covered his messy hair. 
It was dented in a few places, but then proper Viking helmets should always be dented, he thought. Then show a helmet that has been well used. He wasn't so keen on the horns on his helmet, if he were honest. They were small and stubby like a baby's sheep, not scary looking at all. The helmets hanging from the blacksmith's stall had proper horns. They curved up like mammoth tusks, pointed and sharp. The blacksmith was still talking, so Volga slipped off his own helmet, pulled down a new one and plonked it onto his head. The world went dark. The helmet was a bit on the big side. It covered most of Volga's face, making it impossible to see. He pushed it back a little and saw the lanky figure of his best friend, Knut, walking towards him. Knut's helmet was even worse than Volga's. The horns were pointing in opposite directions, one up, one down. It looked ridiculous, but Knut never seemed all that bothered. All right, Knut said, giving Volga a friendly grin that showed his buck teeth. Look at this stuff, said Volga excitedly. Grab a helmet, quick. I've got a helmet, Knut replied with a shrug. Volga pulled down another new one from the stool. He tossed it to Knut. Stick that on, Knut changed helmet. It covered his head all the way down to his chin. You can see there. What now? Helmet war! Volga cried. He lowered his helmet and charged blindly. Knut ducked his head and there was a crash of metal as the helmets banged together. Knut laughed. Raging bull attack! He roared as the boys locked horns again. Suddenly they both felt a sharp tug at the back of their tunics and they were jerked into the air. Put the helmets down! boomed the blacksmith. Oops. Both boys quickly removed their headgear. The blacksmith's soot-stained face snarled at them. Now, clear off the pair of you, he said, dropping them into the mud and taking the helmets from their hands. That was fun, Volga said with a grin as he and Knut shuffled away from the stall. What do you want to do now, asked Knut. Volga shrugged. I've got to take these trout eyes to my dad. Knut licked his lips. I love trout eyes. Can I have one? Yeah, if you want, said Volga. He held the bag out to his friend but another hand snatched it out of his. Mmm, trout eyes, said a bigger boy. You shouldn't have. Hey, give those back, Gunnar, Volga yelped. Gunnar the Grim was Volga's arch enemy from the neighbouring village of Gulp. He enjoyed nothing more than making Volga's life miserable. Yum, Gunnar said with a grin, stuffing a handful of the eyes into his mouth. Delicious. Volga tried to snatch the bag back, but Gunnar held them up out of his reach. Give them back! Volga snarled. They're for my dad. Oh, that's his reward for cleaning bogs, is it? The bigger boy laughed. Here, you can have them. There was a soggy splat as Gunnar tipped the entire bag over Volga's head. See you around, Stinky, he sniggered. Then he strode off through the market. You okay? asked Knut, helping his friend up. Volga wiped off the worst of the trout eyes and glared at Gunnar's back. That does it, he growled. He searched the ground until he found something to throw. It was a mouldy, rotten potato, the perfect weapon. He asked for this. Taking careful aim, Volga hurled the rotting spud at Gunnar. Yes, he said as the potato flew towards Gulp's he boy's head. At last the moment, Gunnar turned away. So at the last moment, Gunnar turned away, revealing Princess Freya standing by the jewelled stool, admiring the gold and silver. No, Volga groaned as the soggy spud struck with a splat and exploded against the side of Freya's head. Whoops. The princess cried out in shock, her long blonde plaits whipping round as she turned in Volga's direction. Her eyes narrowed with rage. Her fists clenched. Volga felt Knut take cover behind him. Now you've done it, Knut whimpered. She'll get us locked up. He took another look at her face. Or maybe just kill us. Before Freya could do either of those things, the blast of a horn stopped her. Around the market, the buyers stopped buying and the sellers stopped selling, and everyone turned in the direction of the noise. As he waited to hear the announcement that the horn blast heralded, Volga hoped with all of his heart that it would be exciting enough to make Freya forget about the potato. What do you think? Is that likely to happen? I'm going to leave it there at the end of chapter one for today and find out what happens again tomorrow.